Something is happening currently in America. The winds of politics are starting to change, and we're starting to see the establishment collectively realize all at once that Bernie Sanders might actually be able to pull this off. We've seen, you know, inklings, an article here and there, but just over the course of the last week, to get a sense of just how quickly they're all realizing he actually has a chance, I mean, Look at all of the articles that came out, ranging from articles in Newsweek to the Wall Street Journal of all places, who don't just think he can be the nominee, but think he can be the president. They're realizing that they're having to uh, grapple with the prospect of a Bernie Sanders nomination and a Bernie Sanders presidency, and it's really nice to see. And at some point, I'm sure that they're going to, you know bring out the big guns like Obama and Clinton to campaign against Bernie Sanders so they can somehow stop his momentum. But for now, it's really nice to see them all collectively recognize for the most part that Bernie Sanders might be unstoppable at this point. Now, of course, nothing is a foregone conclusion. I always add that caveat. You know, he still has to fight really hard for it. We all have to work really hard for this goal. And the fact that I'm sharing this good news to you with you shouldn't, you know, encourage you to let your foot off the gas. You should, in fact, make more calls for Bernie Sanders, knock on more doors. That should be our response because the higher he goes, the more vulnerable he becomes because the establishment and capital, they're not just going to roll over and die. They're not going to let him win the nomination without a huge fight. So we have to work for this. However, still, knowing what Bernie Sanders has behind him, 34.5 million in fundraising in that fourth quarter of December. Five million individual donations. Almost, uh, what is it now, 1.5? It might be higher, million individual donors. And a gigantic movement, all galvanized, all extremely enthusiastic. They're kind of realizing that we might not be able to stop him. Now, someone who is no friend to progressives, David Axelrod, he's actually a former Obama administration official. He now works for CNN. He kind of admitted that, look, if I had to choose anyone, you know, currently, I think that Bernie Sanders is in the best position. Now, this is the only clip I could find, so hopefully it's not too unbearable. But what he said here was incredibly interesting. I wanted to play his remarks so I could talk about it. Let's talk, a little, let's talk more about the positioning that you just mentioned there, because this is let's put up the CBS poll. Joe Biden uh, is in a three way tie with Bernie Sanders and, and Mayor Pete Buttigieg um, for first in Iowa. Whose position of those three would you rather be in? Uh, you know, that's that's really hard to say. I think Sanders probably because I, you know, he is almost invulnerable here. Uh, he has he raised more money than anyone else. He's got a very committed core of supporters. Uh, he's going to do reasonably well in Iowa. He could win Iowa. Didn't people yeah, but write him off after well the heart attack? Answer. Yeah, they did. I mean, I think the, the thing that we should, we relearn this lesson every four years, which is don't jump to any conclusions uh, about Iowa or a presidential race too early. There are too, too many dynamics. Things change. He's come back smartly. So he goes on to talk about Elizabeth Warren, and I tried to find the full clip, but I can't find it anywhere. CNN hasn't posted it. Um, but that really, that says so much to me. What he said there tells me that even if you know, we're correct to assume that the establishment will, you know, pull some type of trick, bring out Obama to campaign against Bernie Sanders. It might be too late. He says Sanders is almost invulnerable here. He raised more money than anyone else. He's got a very committed core of supporters. And that's exactly it. It's still the case that Joe Biden is the front runner when you look at aggregate polling data. Nationally speaking, he's polling in first place. But Bernie Sanders is doing really well in early primary states. He could very well win Iowa. He is positioned currently to win New Hampshire. And in the event he wins those first two states, hopefully that can kind of improve his odds in Nevada and South Carolina. But going into Super Tuesday... He has a really good shot, and there's a lot of delegates to be won on Super Tuesday, which I believe is March 29th. And on that day, like, we're looking at a situation where we could see, you know, if not a standout emerge, the top two or three candidates kind of come out on top, and the field could really be narrowed. People are realizing in the establishment that 
anything that they did before to try to stop Bernie Sanders, the smears, the allegations that he's a hypocrite because he wrote a book and is now a millionaire, none of it worked. Because the reason why Bernie Sanders supporters support him is because of policy. Now, you might not necessarily know that if you tuned into mainstream media because there was literally a guest on there who claimed that his supporters don't actually care about policy. In fact, we'll play that clip really quickly before I talk about that. The idea there was gonna be a progressive battle between Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, it was never something that had much resonance with me because that presumes that Bernie Sanders supporters are supporting him primarily for policy purposes, and that's not really what's going on. A lot of his core base support like him because they see him as sort of a political and democratic savior type character. See, it's such a ridiculous statement to make because the opposite is actually true. The complete opposite is true. Bernie Sanders has such a loyal following because we are committed to policy. The reason why none of the media smears and attempts from political elites to, you know, bring him down haven't worked is because at the end of the day, we are voting based on policy and there is nobody in that race that comes anywhere near the policies that Bernie Sanders is offering. And even if anyone is a relative second in terms of progressivism in that race, he's the one with the movement that can actually get these policies codified into law, which is why nothing that they tried to do has been able to stop Bernie Sanders. And that's really encouraging to see. Now, as usual, again, I want to stress that we do not have this wrapped up just yet. If he becomes the nominee, then we have to battle to get him into the White House. But what I want you to take away is that we can do this, but it's not over. We have to fight. We have to work hard and understand that the establishment's collective realization that Bernie Sanders can win is more motivation for us to work even harder because now they're going to try to switch it up possibly to try to throw something else at us we don't know what types of curveballs that they have what types of smears they have but we do know that capital and big money they're going to be aligned in their hatred against bernie sanders and they're not going to let us win easily we all know that by now so we've got to push harder and acknowledge that this is all the more reason to fight even harder because what we're doing is fighting for something that will actually lead to real change in this country. And we have a real shot. So in 2016, when we all felt like, you know, we did all of this for Bernie Sanders, advocacy, canvassing, phone banking, text banking, we did it for nothing, right? That was the general sentiment, but you didn't. Back then in 2016, all of your work was just a down payment to what we've built today, which is a bigger, broader movement. It's more robust and our chances are better than ever. We can do this. We just have to keep on fighting and fight even harder now. Good work, everyone. You could support the Humanist Report at patreon.com slash humanist report. But trust me, I'd have way more supporters on Patreon if that was my podcast. Sad. <laughs>